Hello. Yeah. So uh, now, uh, yeah. So welcome back to uh, this NPTEL uh, online course uh, on analog electronic circuits. Uh, this is, of course, it is. Um, we are having this course for maybe last two to three weeks. Uh, it is continuation of that uh, that uh, topic of common emitter amplifier. Uh, we have uh, discussed about the theoretical aspect and some of the numerical examples and uh, in the previous class we could not complete the numerical uh, problems all uh, so today we are um, discussing some more numerical problems in fact uh, uh, in the previous numerical problem we have discussed about how to find the gain uh, numerically as well as uh, how to analyze the circuit and today what we will be doing is that uh, in case if you have to design one common emitter amplifier for a given requirement then how do you proceed and what may be the uh, design guidelines we need to follow. So that is what we will be discussing uh, and also uh, in case if you have uh, say multiple common emitter amplifier. Uh, cascaded to each other, then how do you find the overall gain? So, these are the two things we do have in mind. Uh, so, as I said that um, uh, this is what uh, we are, um, um, in fact, uh, we already have covered significant part of the numerical examples and uh, uh, particularly the uh, operating point and then uh, the um, and its stability and then finding performance matrices and today we are going to discuss about the uh, design guidelines and in case if we have say relatively bigger circuit then how do you proceed to um, uh, analyze that circuit. Uh, so uh, let me skip um, a number of slides here. Um, Yeah, so we have covered this numerical problems of the CE amplifier, and then uh, yeah, this is uh, where uh, we are going to discuss the design guidelines of uh, common emitter amplifier, and um, yeah, mm, so uh, we are going to discuss detail about the uh, design guidelines of uh, common emitter amplifier and. Uh, in case if the topology is fixed uh, uh, and if it is decided to be fixed by us uh, topology, uh, then how do you proceed? First thing is that um, we are assuming that these informations are available, particularly the supply voltage it is given to us. Typically, uh, the supply voltage it is given by uh, the customer who requires this uh, circuit and also this information may be available, particularly whether the BJT is um, you know, silicon type or uh, germanium um, BJT. Based on that, we can decide what is the VBE on of the uh, device. And uh, also, we are assuming that um, the beta of the transistor it is measured, and uh, maybe 100 or 200 or whatever it is. Uh, so we assume that these three informations are given to us. Whenever then, whenever we are talking about, uh, we have to design. What do we mean by designing? Is that finding the value of this bias registers um, and also uh, these two capacitors, C1 and C2. So our main task is to find uh, the value of this uh, bias components as well as some guidelines of um, how to select the value of C1 and C2. And uh, of course. Um, uh, the requirement here probably it will be in terms of the gain of the circuit and then uh, the output swing uh, of the, um, the circuit, namely what may be the available voltage here or available voltage here without um, having significant distortion and that is of course very much important thing. And then uh, the power dissipation of the, uh, the um, uh, circuit namely if the supply voltage is given to us next thing is that the power dissipation it will be decided by how much the equation current is flowing through uh, the transistor IC 
and uh, uh, IB. So, we can say that IB and IC predominantly IC uh, sorry IC is uh, defining the total current. So, we can say that in the power dissipation it is uh, uh, essentially means that uh, the um, value of the collector current and uh, then uh, the additional information uh, it may be uh, required is that what may be the input resistance of the circuit, uh, small signal or large signal input resistance, then output resistance of the amplifier um, and then uh, what may be the input capacitance C in. So, input capacitance probably we can skip that part for the time being, uh, but just to say that um, uh, to, to calculate this um, C in or to get some information about C in, we require additional information from the device uh, data set is that uh, C pi and uh, C mu. Um, so, from that we can calculate um, the um, uh, what will be the C in. Uh, so, uh, as I said that maybe in the uh, we will skip this part because this C mu um, its contribution to C in it is through Miller effect. So, we yet to cover that Miller effect whenever we will be covering that we will discuss about this part. So, uh, then what we are talking about that finding this components based on uh, predominantly from uh, these informations. Now, if you see the voltage gain of the common emitter amplifier A V, uh, we have discussed that its magnitude it is G m into R c and the G m it is um, and the cohesion current I c divided by thermal equivalent voltage V t. Uh, so, this multiplied by R c what it is giving us that um, uh, voltage drop D c wise voltage drop across this resistance R c divided by V t. Now, um, of course, this uh, upper limit of the drop across this resistance it is defined by this V c c. So, uh, its hard limit is um, uh, V c c uh, divided by V t. So, we cannot get gain higher than this one. So, definitely I should say this is higher limit and uh, in fact, uh, if you consider drop across this resistance is V c c then the required voltage here it is or rather the uh, the voltage here to be uh, 0. Um, so, obviously, if we make this voltage 0, then output signal swing it will be getting affected. So, this is just to say numerical limit of the gain. Practically, um, it, we have to consider output swing and uh, to consider the output swing, you may recall the, uh, the um, load line and then device characteristic uh, and the operating point. So, uh, I c versus V c characteristic curve of the device is uh, say uh, like this and then we do have the uh, load line which is defined by uh, this V c c point here and then uh, the current here uh, which is V c c divided by R c and this is the operating point. Uh, so, lower side we do have uh, limit of the V c e. Uh, or output voltage it is V c e set. So, this V c set uh, again of course, it depends on the device uh, typically in the order of uh, say 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 volt and then we do have V c c. So, over this limit the V c e voltage or the V out voltage it will be uh, flying as we are applying signal here the corresponding voltage here it will be flying over this range. Now, to have a meaningful swing of the signal uh, from this with respect to this question point lower side and upper side, it is better to set this question point at the middle. So, I should say that if the question point it is uh, it is set at the middle, then we can say drop across this resistance R c instead of this the it is limit it should be uh, rather um, V c c minus V c e set um, divided by 2 
and then of course, you have the V t. So, I should say uh, this is the uh, uh, upper limit of the uh, voltage gain giving importance to the output swing. And in this case, uh, if I say that V c set is uh, very small uh, and um, uh, then uh, we can say that uh, upper limit of the, um, the voltage gain we can uh, practically you can say this is 12 volt, 12 volt divided by 2 into um, uh, V t is uh, 0 0.026, right. So, that gives us uh, uh, upper limit uh, how much this may be uh, 4 around 460 uh, something, okay. Uh, so, beyond this definitely we cannot get the voltage gain. Uh, let me check whether uh, the numerical value we obtain for this upper limit is uh, uh, this, yeah 461, fine. 461 is the upper limit, but it is fine. Um, so, uh, based on this information and of course, if we do so, the output swing, this output swing it is becoming uh, V C C uh, approximately V C C by 2 plus minus with respect to the question point. Ignoring, uh, ignoring of course, this V C set assuming this is very small. Uh, so, yes, so we do have uh, good swing and then uh, we can have a very uh, decent gain here and um, um, this is uh, 6, 6 divided by okay. Two and four. Sorry, this by two rather. So it it is in the order of two two thirty one or so. Yeah, around two thirty. Okay. So now to get this two thirty again, what you have to do that drop across this resistance is um, uh, we are allocating this voltage drop uh, close to VCC by two. Uh, now, next thing is that the power dissipation. So, based on this power dissipation information given to us, we can find the value of this current, because we can say this power dissipation it is approximately equal to V c c multiplied by the I c, cohesion current of the, uh, uh, the collector terminal. So, if the power dissipation is given to us, since we know this uh, VCC, so from that we can find what will be the corresponding IC. So, uh, then if I know this IC, if I know the drop across this VRC equals to VCC by 2, then I can find what will be the RC. So, so what is the sequence of uh, finding different parameters? Um, first of all, um, uh, we can uh, set the drop across this R c in the order of or very close to V c c by 2. That will be giving us uh, good gain as well as output showing. Note that our target probably the gain it is not specified. It, it may be said that the gain may be as high as possible and for that uh, to make a balance between this gain and output showing, we can take this one. So, the first thing is that drop across this one, we can take half of the supply voltage and then from power dissipation, we can find what will be the uh, current, cohesion current. So, that is the power dissipation divided by V c c. So, then um, uh, next thing is that uh, we can find the uh, value of R c, which is of course, V R c divided by I c. And uh, then uh, from the information of the beta, we can find what will be the I b and from that we can calculate what will be the R b. R b equals to uh, V c c minus V b e on divided by I b and I b it is um, I c divided by the beta. So, from that we can find what will be the uh, value of this element. In fact, this voltage drop it is very close to 0.6. So, in uh, you may 
you may ignore even 0 0.6 for approximate calculation with respect to 12 volt and that gives you the value of uh, R B. And from that uh, we obtain uh, the um, R B and R C and uh, to find the coupling capacitor or signal coupling capacitor or DC decoupling uh, capacitor say C 1, we need to find what is the input resistance R in and um, uh, you may recall in our previous example. Uh, so, uh, if, if the collector current it was uh, in the order of uh, you know, it was 2 milli ampere. So, the corresponding R in it was um, yeah. So, R in it was um, R pi in parallel with R b which is approximately equals to R pi and R pi equals to beta which is a 100 divided by uh, g m. So, from that you can um, of course, the g m we know. So, um, once we obtain say R c R b then we can find the corresponding R pi and then R pi gives us the input resistance R in and from that we can calculate this c uh, 1 because the um, and the uh, depending on this uh, value of this r and c or time constant uh, we can find the uh, we can get the lower cut off frequency so to to be more precise to get meaningful value of this c1 we require additional information about the uh, about the performance requirement uh, namely the lower cut off frequency so if i know that if uh, if cut off L lower cut of frequency from that we can say that what will be the C 1. So, let me uh, um, consider that uh, these parts are given to us. Next thing is that how do we find the C 1. Uh, so, let me clear it and then we assume that uh, I uh, C it is uh, known to us then R in uh, approximately equal to R pi which is beta divided by g m which is I c divided by V t. And um, if I consider I c is uh, say 1 milli ampere as a special case or uh, one case and beta is say 100. So, from that we can say that uh, beta multiplied by um, 26 milli volt divided by uh, 1 milli ampere. So, this gives us 2.6 k right and um, the uh, lower cut off frequency f cut off l equals to 1 by 2 pi r in into c 1 where c 1 is this one. Uh, now, uh, if I consider this uh, value of this R in, uh, so from that we can see, um, okay, or, or we can rearrange this equation saying that C 1 equals to 1 by 2 pi R in F cut off, right. And, um, Suppose this uh, R in it is say um, around 25 or 26 k and say lower cut off frequency is say, uh, say 50, 50 hertz. So, um, then what may be the value of this C 1? Let us see uh, 1 divided by um, 2 uh, into pi into R in is um, uh, 2.6 k. Uh, into uh, say 50. So, k is uh, um, 1000 uh, you have to write here yes. So, we do have 100 here uh, yeah. So, this is um, 1 by or rather 10 to the power minus uh, 5 divided by um, 2.6 pi. 
uh, or you can say that this is 10 divided by 2.6 into pi into uh, 10 to the power minus 6 farad or you can say in the order of say micro farad to get a lower cutoff frequency of 50 hertz. So, that gives you an idea that for a typical exam uh, case the C 1 should be in the order of a micro farad. In fact, the other uh, coupling capacitor may be in the same order assuming that this resistance and input resistance there and also the output resistance here coming from the next stage uh, or I should say the, the input resistance of the next stage is may be in the same order of this input resistance and hence uh, we can say that C 2 it is also in the order of C 1. So, what we have done here it is that we got uh, guidelines that how to design this C amplifier to get a decent performance namely the gain here it is um, uh, whatever the 20 around 230 and then output swing it is around uh, plus minus 6 volt and uh, then uh, power dissipation for say 1 milliampere of current uh, here it is um, uh, 1 milliampere and 12. So, in the order of uh, or close to uh, 12 milliwatt okay. and uh, the, the cutoff frequency if cut off particularly uh, lower cut off frequency uh, is equal to 50 hertz right. For that at least we uh, learn how to design this circuit. Uh, Let us see the similar kind of guidelines uh, can be followed for C amplifier with, uh, uh, with cell bias circuit. Uh, so, yeah, so here we do have cell bias and here again we are assuming that these informations are given to us namely the supply voltage is given to us, BBE on it is coming from the data sheet, um, the beta also may be coming from the data sheet or it may be uh, you can use multimeter uh, or by some other means to uh, find the value of beta. So, we are, we are assuming that this information uh, are is given to us. Uh, we need to find uh, the value of different components uh, namely uh, the, uh, the resistances here and uh, the, um, uh, the capacitor. So, we do have the C 1, C 2 and in addition to that this um, bypass uh, emitter bypass capacitor C uh, E. And uh, here of course, so we do have uh, the important information are like this uh, power dissipation also and maybe the uh, the um, lower cut off frequency if you um, uh, if this information is provided then it will be better to find the value of this c 1 c 2 and in fact um, c e also. Now, compared to the previous circuit the approach it will be similar but you need to understand that um, uh, the uh, entire VCC voltage it is not available for this uh, collector. So, we do have VC requirement VC sat minimum VC sat requirement lower side. In addition to that there is a, a voltage uh, DC voltage required there. Note that while we are connecting the CE and if we are applying a signal here the voltage here it will be DC. So, this DC voltage it depends on how much the value of this R E we are taking and how much the uh, current emitter current or collector current is flowing through the device. Now, um, uh, since the, the voltage drop at this node it is restricting the, the, uh, the limit of this collector voltage of the transistor. Uh, then definitely higher the emitter voltage will get lower swing. So, I should say now uh, uh, the uh, available voltage for output uh, signal it is VCC, VCC minus V E emitter voltage um, divided by. So, this is the this is the voltage uh, of course, I, I need to consider 
the other part also V C E set and then this is the entire uh, swing uh, available to us that divided by 2 may be the possible uh, signal swing. So, plus minus uh, this is the swing. Now, if I take higher value of this uh, V E uh, that reduces the swing. On the other hand, um, uh, if I reduce this voltage at this node, which means that the value of this R E it is also getting reduced and, and then you may recall that the role of this R E namely the collector current expression it is V B B minus V B E on divided by um, the uh, I should say uh, not collector to be more precise the emitter current uh, divided by this R E. And here the assumption is that uh, assumption is that uh, R 1 parallel R 2 which you call R B B uh, it is much smaller than 1 plus beta into R E. So, earlier we have discussed this part and we may of course, we can uh, we may approximate this is very close to I C. So, um, uh, why we are looking for uh, this? Because we like to make the question point independent of beta. So, if I satisfy this condition, then we can say that this is independent of beta and to achieve this one, I cannot take this um, uh, R e uh, small. If I take R e small, that will reduce this R b b. So, this is R b b that in turn it will reduce this input resistance because uh, R b b it is coming in parallel with whatever R pi you do have. So, if this resistance is smaller for a given value of C 1, the lower cutoff frequency it will be affected and moreover there will be a DC current. If I reduce the value of this R 1 and R 2, uh, then there will be DC current flow and that may increase the power dissipation. So, these two are having some trade off uh, the namely the output swing and the uh, uh, value of this R e to move which is uh, playing the role to stabilize the operating point. And the thumb rule rate is that uh, typically if the supply voltage is a 12 volt, uh, the emitter voltage uh, we DC emitter uh, uh, voltage we can take in the order of uh, 1 to 2 volts. So, this, this does not mean that if, if you violate this uh, range. Uh, you may be having severe problem. Uh, sometimes we may go uh, lower side even 0 0.5 uh, volt, uh, it may be going towards even 3 volt, but uh, we suggest that uh, maybe this may be a uh, good choice. So, we can uh, decide on this one and then uh, if we have say 12 volt supply. So, from that if I use a uh, if we if we use a uh, this is the um, uh, emitter voltage, so then uh, the output swing it becomes 10 minus 0 0.3 divided by 2, approximately it is plus minus uh, uh, plus minus 5 volt. That is uh, fairly good. So once we decide that uh, the output swing we want it should be 5 volt, this is a 2 volt. Uh, then naturally the drop across this resistance it is also getting fixed uh, because this is um, uh, the we like to set this operating point almost at the middle. So, ignoring this V uh, C sat part compared to uh, 12 minus 2 10 volt, we can say that this voltage in it may be 5 volt. So, that gives us uh, two information. Um, First of all, uh, the um, uh, the V E we are suggesting to um, take in the range of 1 to 2 volt. As an example, if I take say 2 volt, then um, uh, V uh, R C drop across this uh, resistance R C. So, that is uh, 10 divide 10 minus uh, 2 uh, minus 0 0.3 by 2. So, we can see that this is also in the order of say 5 volt 
and then next thing is the, the power dissipation. So, typically uh, whatever the current it will be flowing here I C, uh, the uh, current base current it will be two order magnitude lower and uh, we like to take this current may be in the order of one order magnitude higher than the I B. So, still this uh, current the, the current flowing through the bias circuit uh, lower much lower than uh, this I C. So, the power dissipation uh, still it, it may be considered as uh, it is getting dominated by V C C and I C. So, from the power dissipation we can find what will be the value of this I C and that is um, uh, the uh, 12 divided by uh, uh, sorry the, this will be power dissipation divided by uh, the 12 volt V C C. Okay. So, once we have um, emitter voltage uh, the voltage drop across R C and then I C which is also um, uh, approximately equal to uh, I E. So, now we can directly get the, um, uh, the value of uh, R C and R E. So, um, V R C divided by uh, I C and um, R E equals to V E divided by I E. Okay. So, now we obtain this two. Next thing is that uh, these two resistances uh, R 1 uh, and uh, R 2 should be such that the voltage coming here uh, it should be consistent with the required 2 volt here. So, we want this voltage drop here which is R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 multiplied by uh, V C C. So, that is the DC voltage here before we connect the uh, transistor base. Uh, so, we can approximate that this voltage it will be um, very close to whatever the required voltage here which is the emitter voltage plus V uh, B E on. Namely, in this case this is uh, 2.6 volt. So, from that we can say that uh, the R 1 uh, R 2 ratio can be obtained. Right? Uh, in other words, we can say that 1 plus R 1 divided by R 2 equals to V C C divided by 2.6 12 divided by uh, 2.6. So, that gives us the ratio of R 1 and R 2. Uh, so, either from this ratio and this information you can uh, get the value of uh, R 1 and R 2 or uh, we can use the, uh, the other the additional information we have discussed that R B B which is uh, equal to R 1 um, in parallel with R 2. Uh, this should be um, uh, much lower than 1 plus beta into R E. R E we already obtained and typically we can see that this is less than or equal to one tenth of this. So, using this guidelines this is R E. So, using this guidelines and the information we obtained here uh, we can find the value of R 1 and R 2. So, now we obtain um, uh, all the, uh, the bias registers next thing is that the C 1. Uh, so, if you see the input capacitance of this circuit it is uh, uh, in case C E it is uh, dominating. So, for the signal uh, the input resistance it will be um, the uh, R 1 uh, parallel R 2 in parallel with the R pi. So, this circuit is having input resistance of R pi. So, from that we can get the um, R in. Now, uh, similar to the, the fixed bias circuit uh, we can find the expression of uh, C 1 equals to um, 
uh, 1 by 2 pi um, r in uh, then the uh, the cutoff frequency lower cutoff frequency and so for a give for the value of this uh, for a given value of this lower cutoff frequency and then r in um, since uh, this resistance may be in the order of r pi again this uh, the value of this uh, capacitor c1 it may be uh, similar to whatever previously discussed value of the c1 so again this may be in the order of microfarad so likewise the c2 also it will be in the same order uh, of c1 whereas uh, this um, uh, ce uh, it will be having uh, another role to play to define the lower cutoff frequency and uh, the lower cutoff frequency decided or defined by the ce uh, it is coming from the uh, the 1 by gm of this device because this capacitor it will be seeing the resistance of this circuit which is combination of re and 1 by gm uh, coming from the uh, transistors uh, looking into the emitter so the ce on the other hand it can be defined by that and its expression it will be similar uh, so let me clear and then write it uh, about the uh, expression of uh, ce need to be followed so ce it is uh, 1 by 2 pi uh, and then um, uh, the um, f lower cut of frequency and then um, of course the resistance which is 1 by gm of the transistor uh, so uh, we have uh, seen that this 1 by gm it is uh, um, it is uh, for say 1 milliampere of current uh, 1 by uh, gm it will be uh, the resistance is very small as uh, as an example here if i consider uh, ic equals to say 1 milliampere then gm equals to um, it is 1 by 26 because thermal equivalent voltage it is uh, 26 millivolt so that gives us with this information uh, the expression of the the ce it is 1 by 2 pi um, then gm uh, it is 1 by gm it is uh, so gm we do have here um, uh, yes so into 26 into um, f cutoff right and uh, you can see here you in case if i am looking for lower cutoff frequency of say uh, 50 uh, 50 uh, uh, 50 hertz then this will be 1 by 2 pi into um, uh, 26 into um, 50 uh, so we can write uh, this as um, 10 to the power minus 3 divided by um, um, 2 uh, then no this is pi then 2.6 so it is almost in the order of um, uh, millifarad so we can say that this may be coming in the range of millifarad mm, no it will be uh, hundreds of microfarad hundreds of microfarad okay so what i like to say that in case if this capacitor value it is in the order of 1 microfarad to support say 50 uh, hertz then the required capacitor here uh, uh, capacitance of the ce it is um, uh, 100 microfarad so the value of this capacitance it will be much higher than the c1 and c2 to get the same lower cutoff frequency so that's about the uh, overall uh, design guidelines uh, let me take a uh, short break and then uh, again we will be uh, coming back to cover 
uh, maybe a little different aspect of the design guidelines. Thank you.